Let's take a look at a very interesting sequence from this Master Challenge Jumpers course designed by Tammy Stone. And we're going to focus in on the number 14 tunnel to 15, the 270 turn to 16, to number 17. And there are two main problem areas in this sequence that made it very, very tricky. The first is this broad jump and this jump out here that really catches the dog's eye after the number 15 and before the number 16 jump. And the other is this number 12, which a lot of dogs just went off course and actually took. So in order to figure out what's going on, we need to understand our dog's lines. So when we take a look at our dog's path, as they come out of this tunnel and take this jump, they're really on a line for the weave poles if you extend that line out to infinity. And so when you call your dog to turn them, the first thing they're going to see is the broad jump, but that's the wrong obstacle. If you're able to successfully call them off of the broad jump, the next obstacle they see is also the wrong choice. They really need to get to choice number three. So as a handler, you need to figure out a way to get them from 15 to 16 without seeing all the off-course traps that are naturally in the dog's path. On the other part, after the number 16 jump, you've got this off-course here and you have an unusually long distance from 16 to 17. When dogs see this number 12, it feels like that could be the right thing to do. If you think about it again in terms of your dog's line as they take number 16, they're headed for this number 13 jump. So that when you pull them with the shoulder turn, the first thing they see is the off course trap. And this really caught a lot of dogs. The second choice is the correct one. And the, the placement of the obstacles, which is fairly close together at a very, very small angle of difference between them, means that it's a very hard discrimination for the dog. So it's very hard to get your dog from 15, 16, down to 17. So we're going to take a look at two different handler strategies in the next part of this video. We're picking up the action here at the number 14 tunnel. Dogs are going to come over here at this number 15 wingless, and they need to get to this red jump here. In the way is this gray jump and the broad jump as well. These are the two obstacles that are going to draw their attention. So the first thing we're going to do after picking the dog up out of the tunnel is create a nice turn, as nice a wrap as we can, over this wingless jump. So let's zoom in here, and I'm going to opt for deceleration. So here I've stopped my forward momentum. We're not moving forward, so the dog should not be extending on toward the broad jump. And once I've done that, and I feel like the dog has put in the extra stride, and it's going to take off a little bit closer to the jump, I move immediately into my front cross. So here you see a very nice turn. The dog lands and immediately on landing is already headed in the right direction. Unfortunately, now we're headed actually at the wrong end of this red jump. So the dog's headed for the inside of the jump. We actually need them to come this way. And so this is a classic threadle situation. You can look at it and think of it this way, that the dog is on a 270 line, if it helps you visualize it, and we need to throttle them to get them over the jump the correct way. So this is where we're going to use the right arm. So my right arm is my throttle arm. It's rotated toward the dog, so that's going to pull the dog in toward me. And that way. So you see the dog come in this way. So now that we've got the good throttle response and we're through the first part of uh, this very tough course, we get to the next tough part. And we need to get all the way out here to the wingless jump but we've got this off-course uh, blue jump here that's in the way and the dog's on a line, as you can see, uh, for a jump that's out there, kind of a dummy jump. So that when you turn the dog, the first thing they see is this off-course jump. So you see now the dog is adjusted with my call and shoulder rotation and they're headed for the wrong course. So here I'm going to use a verbal command in combination with a physical cue. The physical cue here is as we're landing, um, I'm patting my thigh. You can't really see it here because it's on the left side of my body, so I'm blocking your view of it. But you bring the dog into your side. That takes them off of this off course. You can see the dog running right by the off course, and now we're on a line for the correct obstacle. And now we're just going to finish out the course with a rear cross. This is Andrew and his Border Collie Bacardi. 
and they're going to handle this tough sequence with a little bit of a different handling option here. So we start again with the number 14 tunnel. Andrew's going to pick his dog up and he's going to start by stopping at this wingless jump which is very similar to what you just saw me do. Um, and what this is going to do is take away the broad jump here which actually the judge is conveniently uh, resetting as well. And Andrew has decided to handle from inside of the box, so he's keeping Bacardi on his right arm. So after this turn, Bacardi is staying on his right arm and is going to take the red jump this way. So once he does that, you realize now that he's doing a serpentine maneuver here. So 270 approach, now with the serpentine, Andrew's left arm is reaching for the dog. This is going to turn the dog and commit the dog to the jump. And now Andrew is free to pick the dog up on the on the right. So this is Andrew's right arm here. And what this does is takes the dog right by the off course without the dog ever seeing it. So that's the beauty of using the serpentine over here. This is the off course jump to the left of Andrew, behind Andrew, that numerous dogs took. But because Andrew is completely blocking the dog's view of it, view of that jump, and the dog is on his right side, the dog never even sees it. And so it becomes a safe, easy rear cross to finish out the course. Let's take a look at that one more time. He's got the deceleration here at the wingless. He serpentines over the middle jump, creates the left to right arm change, which completely takes away that off course, allowing him to finish with a rear cross and a beautifully done, beautifully executed maneuver there.